step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing and life-loving to do, which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Okay, not burn, more like reverse terraforming operations and suffocating. But you get the idea. Hades takes the biosphere back to zero. Square one, blank slate. And then, only then, does it hand the steering wheel back to Gaia and say, try again, old girl. And better this time, or we'll have to do this again. That's Hades. It's pretty badass when you think about it. Extinction on demand. Death on speed dial. All for the greater good, of course, but still, kind of metal. <laughs> so welcome to Hades. Welcome to the Void. Okay, so if that's the original purpose of Hades, why does it want me extinct? We need more data. And how does it end up in the wreckage of a Pharaoh Titan, getting worshipped by the Eclipse like some kind of god? I'm learning as you are, Aloy. Keep searching. So that guy created Hades that we're fighting now? I knew there was something dodgy about him. Noise complaints. Noise. Nice. Call on me confoundedly, see? Bashcore? Anyone who say the old TT code to, to Bashcore is straight up lying. And you know it. All tribe don't have a truck with commercialized razzle dice. Nuh uh. Heck, I'd rather. Guzzle a liter of Sita run runoff, then listen to Grace Worm for 30 seconds. Hand to God and swear on my mama's grave. And she was religious. Now that ain't Bashkor blasting the Hades lab, shaking the walls, rattling folks' teeth. It's death metal, girl. Classic music. 80s and 90s mostly. Got me some Dutch deathcore, some Japanese gore grind, some Swedish cannibal themed stuff. Oh, that's, is that Cannibal Corpse? Oh, probably. Stop by if you want to listen, or heck, just come within 50 meters of the lab. Ain't no bashcore you'll see, or hear rather, in the screech that rends the air and feel and throbbing pulse of the floor and walls and the ceiling swallowing you up like you was yawn and trapped in the gullet of, go of gothic deathfish. Hallelujah. As for those requests to turn it down, no can do, Lizzie. This is how I code. Turn down my death metal, might as well give up stimulants, chocolate malls, and industrial accident vids. Last time I heard, we were supposed to be coding Hades down here. Am I really supposed to code to an extinction protocol without death metal to inspire me? Nah, nah, I don't think so. Whew. I, I, can, I can hear his voice. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, his... I guess his neighbor is listening to death metal every day, whether he wants it or not. More reading? Are you kidding me? Tater, just popped three blues, but I earned it. Finally figured out the Goldilocks solution to guys rather extreme executive authority. If that ain't worth 10 to 12 hours of dream time, what is? Before this, every Earth Usurpation protocol I designed failed in simulation because it was either too hard or too soft. Too hard and it degraded the Gaia core, sure it pried her figurative fingers off the figurative driving wheel so Hades could take control, but by breaking her fingers, sometimes her arms too. Ugh. So that couldn't fly. Everything depends on Gaia taking control back after Hades has done his business, so I had to find a solution that didn't leave Gaia any worse for the wear. Too soft and Gaia only pretends to relinquish control. In simulation after simulation, Hades would take command of the terraform system and reverse operations, only to have Gaia lurk in the background, quietly re-reversing processes and fals falsifying telemetry to hide its interference. Sneaky. I swear ain't nothing Gaia wouldn't do to keep life going, even when it's just a simulated plant life. Turns out the just right solution is to isolate Gaia in a protective code shell, preserving its integrity, then unseat it from command position so Hades can sleep in the figurative captain's chair and work its magic. Um, those blues are coming on pretty strong now, so I'm not really describing it there, uh, but pretty sure it'll work. Yeah, those blues are plenty strong. Guess it's time to sleep and bed. I'll be back later tomorrow, alligators. 
So basically, he launched the most advanced AI ever created by mankind in a bash shell. Okay, and just control C. Seems about right. Archive abuse from Samina to Travis Tate, CC Sobex. Mr. Tate, this mail concerns Apollo archive submission numbers, your 666th submission in just five days. And oh, what a doozy. Despite earlier warnings regarding inappropriate materials, you choose to submit five, 265 holographic remasters of acknowledged classics of extreme exploitation cinema. Allow me then to thank you on two counts. One, for giving me the pleasure of rejecting your submission thereby consigning your favorite Eastern European torture flakes to their ilk and their ilk to the dust heap of oblivion. I truly, it truly warms my heart to know that I have saved future humanity from the ordeal of experiencing not just one, but all 16 installments of Making a Millipede. Don't worry, the Pasolini materials has already been preserved. Extreme, perhaps, but art. 2. For clarifying a concept that was so long been ambitious, and ambiguous and ethically fraught for archivists such as myself, the definition of obscenity. You have freed me from the subjective quagmire embodied in Judge Potter's famous utterance, I know it when I see it. Thanks to you, I can now apply a single objective criterion. If Travis Tate submitted it, it's obscene. Accordingly, I have directed Apollo staff to summarily reject all of your future submissions, sight unseen. Perhaps you might invest some uh, the time you would have spent preparing for the submissions on, I don't know, your assigned work. We have a world to save after all, or the rest of us do anyway. Yikes, girl! The burns, the zings. I mean, they they aren't really Aloy Aloy class, but you know, she's she's trying. Just control C, control V, yep. Whoa. Looks like the only way onwards. Yeah, ooh, hello. Wait, is this the right way? No, the right way is over there. This is, it's just, okay. Just a dead end. Can I? Can we get out, please? No. Okay. I don't think we were supposed to be able to get in there, but we did, and we didn't get punished for it. Please, no more reading. Please, no more reading. Gosh darn it. All right, fine. Uh, Cradle Sealed from Patrick Brockhart Klein to Sobek. Eleuthia 01 was successfully sealed before the swarm advancing across Xinjiang province could detect it. Ping back from crucial systems is good for our maiden voyage is a success. Regards my disputes with the betas over zygote selection. Of course, I understand we have limited overhead to run simulations of gene flow in our future humans, but we can all agree there is margin for refinement in future crater populations. Donk. In the addition to personally overseeing completion of Eleuthia 2 site inside Mount Namuli, I will formulate and propose a modified zygote selection plan within the week. Got too much already. What? Excuse me? Oh, just a health push. Okay. Hello, don't scare me like that. Maybe we should watch the holo thing first. Welcome to Eleuthia, the crown and king of Gaia's subordinate functions. For it is by Eleuthia that the human race will continue to exist. I am Patrick Brochard Klein, the Alpha in charge of this program. Now let one thing be perfectly clear from the outset. 
Eleuthia is not a genetic engineering project. Our goal is to preserve the human genome, not alter it. A snapshot of human genetic diversity, literally frozen in time. The genetic quintessence of our species, unmodified. Under my watch, our activities and initiatives will comply with the 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Now that may seem a quaint, even trivial concern to you in light of present circumstances, but... As one of the authors of the Accords, it is far from trivial to me. The practical challenges before us are staggering in scope and complexity, but not insurmountable. No. Global collation and provisional storage of zygotes, perfection of exogenic technologies, design and perfection of servitors, to provide nurture and inculcation during early child development, all of these program components must and will proceed in tandem. To say nothing of the breakneck construction of cradle facilities at sites around the world. So, si vous êtes prêt, let us begin. FZ Chambers The ectogenic chambers arrived two days ago. I spent the last 36 hours examining them and poring over technical documentation. They're a revelation. Astonishing. I don't know what you had to give Fars and Ace in trade to get these chambers, but it was worth it. In a single leap, their embryologists have vaulted past 50 years of technological shortcomings. The risk of ECMO resolved, nutrition delivery resolved, hormonal stability resolved, 12 other risk areas resolved. Before I examined these chambers, I considered the Odyssey to be a fool's errand. But if the rest of FZ's technology is at this level, well, a human colony around Sirius doesn't seem so impossible after all. Mass fabrication of the chambers will present a number of challenges, but I'm confident they can be resolved. I'm going to rest for a few hours, then get back to it. Expect the fabrication plan within 48 hours. You wonder if the other parts of the world are more advanced than did Apollo programs work? Well, I guess we're gonna find out later. Oh, you mean in like Forbidden West? Ooh, that's an excellent question. Development of the artificial persona for cradle servitors, nurturer, disciplinarian, healer, continues at a good pace. We're targeting Turing 0.4 for these constructs. This should allow low-grade empathy and limited improvisation without undermining adherence to codified behavioral behavior sets. The stimulus-driven switching of person A, however, is proving to be a greater software challenge than anticipated, especially concerning our entrenched feedback loops between the disciplinarian and healer person A. I've also attached the reports from the incident where a servitor running the mother person intervened on a disciplinarian servitor's behavior. A parental argument, if you will. I'm using it on first glance, perhaps, but deeply concerning. I've attached a comprehensive plan for the correct for correcting these interactive protocol shortcomings in just data corrupted. Okay. What is? Are these what I what I think they are? Artificial wombs. Machines to spawn a new generation of human beings. Parsing it model K. Ectogenic chamber of advanced design. Understatement. Oh, that's already. just a health potion. Did we get all the things? I believe we have. Okay. How how get up? Use stairs like a normal person. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Cradle facilities. Elizabeth said a, a new generation of humans would be spawned inside such places. She did. Oh, Mother Mountain. It was one of them? There's only one way to be sure. 
The hatch wouldn't open. Something, something about a corrupted alpha registry. I need to search Elizabeth's office. Okay, here we go. Yeah, they put water here to save you if you fall down. And then that spike. <laughs> Just to troll you. Did I grab the loot down there? I did, didn't I? Pretty sure I did. Don't worry, just the ceiling collapsing randomly. It's fine. What is this thing? Looks like it used to hold something. Some component that got removed. Us would benefit from antilopony morphologies, though Capric forms show superior load-bearing capability. You're a quick study, Gaia. Dr. Sobek, as I have conducted this comparative analysis of mammalian morphologies, I've gathered extensive data on the Quaternary Extinction event. Oh? And your assessment? Gaia? Logically speaking, the extinction was a natural consequence. And yet... And yet... I find the loss of megafaunal species... unaccountably sad. That they passed forever into oblivion... causes me to experience... a grief... that is difficult to describe. Am I malfunctioning? <sighs> no, no, Gaia, you're not. This is good. It's very good. You will undergo a brief period of unconsciousness during relocation to Prime and final statement. Elizabeth, may I speak outside protocol? When you're back up and running at the new site, we'll bring the subordinate functions online and see where we stand. Elizabeth. I detect distress. Are you all right? I'm fine. I realize that circumstances compel us to launch earlier than we hoped, but all subsystems are operational. The odds stand in our favor. But what if... Guy, there's nothing left up there. You can't even survive unless you're wearing an environmental suit. There are billions dead in fear and agony. What if... What if it was all for nothing? Elizabeth, extinction was inevitable. Thanks to you, life will have a future. You really believe that? I believe in you, Elizabeth. In you, all things... Okay, I think that's everything in this room. Door is trucking on, you guys. Pure logic won't cut it, Ted. To pull this off, Gaia's going to need to have some skin in the game. It has to care. What if it runs amok? Have we learned nothing from our mistakes? Your, Your mistakes, mistakes, I think you mean? <laughs> All I'm saying is give it a kill switch. She was just born, Ted. I'm not gonna put a gun to her head while she's still in the cradle. You don't like it's a child. What if it becomes a monster? May I speak outside protocol? Of course, Gaia, go on. I'm sorry to contradict you, but Mr. Pharaoh's argument is sound. At this point, the development of my psyche is not entirely predictable. To ensure preservation of life, a hardwired override is, I believe, a necessary safeguard. There. Satisfied, Ted? Jeez, let's just do what it says. Door? Where? Oh, this guy.
Yeah, just put your gentle technical overriding stick in there and bend with it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. No room. Excuse me? Oh, still, still the health potions. Okay. Artemis status from Charles Ronson to Sobek. It's coming along, Liz. I'm positive about it. If those words can still mean anything. Had my sleeves rolled up negotiating with frozen zoos for this sample. So many species trapped in ghoulish hologram dioramas suspended in what ifs more than 14,000 that went extinct between 2000 and 2043. We'll start mapping out primary succession, selecting the pioneer organisms for a balanced and well suitable biosphere, microorganisms and insects, rabbits and hawks, foxes and wolves. Thousands more that will have to wait their turn until our new generation can be entrusted with the duty of restoring them. So they can return to a world, world that, this time, will understand the concept of conservation before it's too late. Yeah, I don't know. There's already been too many too lates. We've lost a whole collection team during this warm breakthrough in Myanmar. The samples we lost were, well, irreplaceable. But thanks to you, Liz, the circle of life will bend, not break. Earth has a lifeless rock before, and someday it will be again. But not now, not like this, not on our watch. Hey, Munin. Hey, Homa. No, Munin, you were here from before. Hello. Homa, hi. How are you doing? Ooh, Commander Sip. I am all out of Sip. Odyssey has failed. From Sabic to all Alphas. Some terrible news, I'm afraid. Farsinis has informed me that the Odyssey mission has failed. Last night, telemetry indicated a catastrophic antimatter containment failure as the drive spun up to depart the solar system. The ship, its crew, its cargo of zygotes and seeds, its alpha build of Apollo, all were, all were lost. Zero Dawn is now the only hope of, for the continuation of the human species and earthly life. We must succeed. Whew. Okay. This is it. The Alpha Registry Master File. Intact? Yeah. No signs of corruption. Then what are you waiting for? Copy the file. With this, I can restore the registry at the hatch inside Allmother. Open it. Go inside. And grasp the secrets within. Where I was born. Maybe. Maybe who gave birth to me. Who? Are you really so naive? There will be no who waiting for you there, Aloy. Whatever birthed you into the world was a what, not a who. You bastard. Oh no, I had a legitimate birth. It's you, Aloy, who are the creation of a machine. But what kind of machine and why? Why were you created? So, we, we, we just use a USB stick? Eclipse. You need to get out of there. What you found is too valuable. You're what about us? There we go. Right, bro. Bug and pray, yep, pretty much. <laughs> really, a single one, that's all it took? Still alive. Good. I have a more suitable death in mind for you, child. <laughs> oh. My entire life, I've always known one thing with prophetic certainty. That I was destined for glory as a great champion of the sun. Even when Joran was murdered, even when Meridian fell, I never doubted my destiny. Until you came along. When I heard that you had survived, a doubt took root in my mind. 
As sure as the sun rises and falls each day, those I am bade to kill die. And yet I failed. How? Why? With each dig site you attacked, each loyal soldier you killed, this pestering doubt grew. It grew when High Priest Bahavas went missing, and when the true Sun King Itamin was snatched away. It not only grew, but multiplied. I kept thinking of the moment my knife pierced your throat. One twist, a simple tug of the blade, and you would have bled out. In slaughter, I am a practiced hand. So why hesitate? Why fail my destined purpose? I just noticed his collar thing is made from uh, bullets that I probably found from like the grave sites and stuff where they fought. I never noticed that before. That's so cool. See that scar on your cheek? You didn't get to finish. Yes, I remember. He fought well, for a savage. His name was Rost, and he was a better man than you could ever hope to be. The better man is the one who doesn't end up with his guts steaming on the ground. No, it wasn't him. I could have finished you before he attacked, but I didn't. This failing troubled my thoughts, haunted every step. It was only when I captured you, down in that place, that I finally glimpsed the sun's design etched at length across the course of events. You were meant to survive that day on the mountain, meant to interfere at dig sites and kill my men, meant to eliminate High Priest Bahavas, meant to snatch Itaman away. Conversely, I was meant to capture you, here, so that you might die as a sacrificial offering to the sun. Everything as it was meant to be, predestined and preordained. <laughs> Some destiny. You're following orders, not some grand cosmic design. You're a puppet, with Hades yanking the strings, a pawn pushed around by larger forces. It'd be laughable if there weren't so much killing involved. Hades is an ancient machine, not the bear.